that's all really great. I'm glad I know it now, but how do I actually use that information? Well, I'm going to tell you. I have a proposition for you. Hey everybody, welcome to this video. I'm very excited because today we're going to be talking about propellers, which is a subject that I've been wanting to, meaning to be talking about because it can be very confusing, but it's quite simple. I say that a lot. I guess that makes sense. Anywho, we're going to be talking about what the numbers mean on the propellers, and we're going to be talking about um, some stuff that you're going to want to know when you're buying propellers, and we're going to be talking about stuff that you're going to want to know when you're choosing a propeller uh, for your airplane. A lot of it, like, it depends on a lot of other things, but we're going to talk about some of the factors of the propeller. But don't worry, we're not going to get too in-depth, uh, but we are going to get just, just right in-depth, the Goldilocks in-depth into this subject, I think. Let's get into it. In this video, we're going to talk about the diameter, the pitch, the, whether or not the propeller is clockwise or counterclockwise, the direction that you want to mount the propeller, the material that the propellers are made out of, and at the end, we're going to be talking about practical application of all of this information. Let's get started. Diameter and pitch. Now, diameter and pitch are that's the most basic way of, of classifying and describing these propellers, and that's mostly what you're going to hear people talking about when they talk about a propeller or what kind of propeller they're using. Now, diameter is pretty straightforward. Let's take this propeller, for example. This propeller is a six inch propeller. Let's get a little ruler here to show you. So the diameter is the is from one tip for a uh, for a, a what do they call by blade? It has two blades. From one t blade tip to the other blade tip, that is, it's the length of the propeller, but we say that it's the diameter. And in this case, it's six inches. Now, uh, the pitch is also measure measured in inches, but it's not, it, you can't actually physically measure it like you can the diameter. What the pitch refers to is the theoretical distance that the propeller would travel forward in one full rotation in a solid medium. So think of it like a screw. If you were to drill to uh, to screw this into wood, a block of wood as you would a wood screw, um, then in one full rotation of the propeller, it would travel three inches. And that's not really the case in real life. It, it won't it won't do the same thing in air because air is compressible and it's it's not a, a it's not a solid medium. But we use that we use that measurement. In this case, it's three. This is a this is a three inch pitch propeller. We use this measurement to really describe how big of a bite of air the propeller will take um, in 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 as it rotates. So the numbers on this propeller, you've probably seen these numbers on the propellers and you're wondering what is going on here. Well, in this case, we have 60, 30, and then an R. Now, actually, let me get rid of that because that's 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 more information than we need at the moment. So in this case, we have a we have a 6030, okay? And that's usually pronounced as 6030. Now, it's not written here, but this is really supposed to be 6.0 and 3.0, but they, there just is no decimal place written on the propeller. And again, that's in inches. So really what we're looking at is 6.0 inches and 3.0 inches. And the diameter always comes first in this in this uh, set of numbers and then the pitch. So we have a 6 inch diameter and a 3 inch pitch. Now for larger propellers, um, it may be written differently. It may be written but like 9 by 6. And so they're saying it's a 9 inch diameter. You can see it's a, it's a much larger propeller here and the pitch is six inches. So what does that tell us? Well, it tells us that it takes a much bigger bite out of the air. Also note that it does not have to be a whole number. In this case, we have a 5045 propeller. So that tells us that the propeller is five inches from one tip to the other, and it has a pitch of 4.5 inches. Again, same thing here, except that this time it's written out as 10 by 4.5. So again, that's a 10 inch diameter and a 4.5 inch pitch. And in addition to just telling you what the what the pitch and the diameter of the propeller is, you may get uh, additional information. In this case, this is so this is a tri-blade propeller. It's written as six by three by three V1S. So it's telling us that it has a uh, six inch diameter. 
a six inch pitch and it is a three excuse me three three inch pitch and it is a three bladed propeller or a tri blade and in this case the v1s is just the uh basically the the prop model number for this maker this is an hq prop here on this one it's uh you'll see it's again it's nine by six and it's sf for slow fly and over here it's apc which is the material that this is made out of. That's not really, again, it's not very standardized as to what information goes here other than the uh, the diameter and the pitch. Now as far as the pitch goes, I want to point out something that uh, the thing about pitch is that it's not always easy to tell what the pitch is just based on the looks alone. So take these two propellers for example. These are both nine inch propellers and you can see this black one here has a very aggressive scoop right here. It's very, very aggressive. It's actually, in, these are very different propellers, um, different material and stuff, uh, but they're both nine inch propellers. And this one, it has more of a, it's just kind of a flat, kind of a, a you know, smooth curve to it. It's, there's, you know, n nothing fancy going on there. So you might see this and think, oh man, that's a really aggressive propeller that must have a really high pitch. But actually this is a nine by 3.8 uh, pitch and or a nine inch and a 3.8 inch pitch and this one is a nine inch diameter five inch pitch so this one actually has a lot more pitch to it so you could say it takes a bigger bite out of the air for every rotation than this one does now here's the thing though this is mainly a styling thing I mean you can have you could if these were the even if these were the same pitch you could get different uh, flight characteristics out of the same diameter and same pitch propeller, but it, they just have a different design to it. There, you'll see, especially for uh, quadcopter propellers, all kinds of different designs in the market right now. That's why it's important to have those numbers because that that kind of gives you a better idea of um, of the performance of the propeller than just by looking at it. Now let's talk about direction of rotation. You may have seen if you want to buy propellers, especially for quadcopters, that it will say that it comes as a set with, uh, with CCW and CW propellers. What that stands for is counterclockwise and clockwise. So take these two propellers, for example. Uh, let's see here. This, is, this one here is a, as, as we showed before, just 6030. And this one, let's say 6030R. The R denotes reverse or clockwise rotation. So, and and we and when we we designate that by when we're looking at the propeller from this from this view. So, like we'd be facing the aircraft. The aircraft would be pointing at us, or the motor, or you know whatever. So basically, a top view, and you can see here the way that you can tell which way it rotates is the the side of the blade looking at it from this angle that's higher is it's going to be going in that direction. Okay, think of it like it's like it's like it's like scooping or shaving off the air, um, and so it's going to be going rotating in that direction. So counterclockwise rotation is considered the normal rotation. Why is that? I don't know. Somebody just decided, hey, that seems like a good idea. So when you have a propeller that has an R after the after the uh, the four digits there, this tells you that it's going to rotate in the opposite of the normal direction or count or uh, excuse me clockwise rotation and this is important especially for quadcopters because typically you want your propellers you want the front and back propellers to spin um, in opposite directions either to spin out or to spin inward depending on how you have yours set up another thing that is important to note is actually the direction of how you put the propeller on your motor you want to put your propeller so that so if you are flying a plane for example you always want the the numbers to be pointing forward pointing the direction that your plane will be flying even if it's a pusher airplane where you have the the propeller on the back of the airplane and and you have the nose over here you still want these numbers to be pointing in the direction of flight and same with a quadcopter. If you want these, mo if you're looking down on the quadcopter, you want these these uh, numbers to be facing up, not this way. You don't want to have your propeller upside down. As far as the materials for the propeller, there are many types to choose from. Here are a couple different examples. So this this type is it's a stiffer kind of glass nylon uh, propeller, and and you can just you can tell it's just very it's stiff. Um, you obviously this is larger than these other propellers, but this type is uh, this is made out of like a plastic kind of material. It's very uh, very flexible, 
and very forgiving. Again, here with these uh, these dowel props, I really like these. These are probably my my favorite ones, and they are very very durable. Um, they, they really don't they don't break. They don't snap off. They really just bend. You can see here, and eh, you can kind of see there. I I, I bent this one, um, but most of the time you can just bend them back in place. Um, if it's not too bad of a hit. So the the stiffer materials generally they'll give you better performance because you really you don't want your your blades to be you know flopping around. Um, the stiffer the better, but they are not as forgiving uh, in a crash. So something like um, carbon fiber blades that would be best for performance. But if you are a beginner, you don't want carbon fiber blades because every time you you uh, you you know touch the propeller to the ground. Um, it's probably going to break on you. So you'd want something like a plasticky kind of propeller, and it's going to be very forgiving. Again, these are uh, these are the dowel prop. Uh, these, this is the T5040 V2 models, and I've, I've really liked these. Very, very durable. Practical application of all of this. So you say, hey, Adam, that's all really great. I'm glad I know it now, but how do I actually use that information? Well, I'm going to tell you. So let's say you have a motor, all right, an electric brushless motor let's say and it's spinning this six inch propeller this is a 60 30 propeller as we talked about and you're like okay this is good this is great but you know what i really i want i want my airplane or quadcopter to go faster i want a higher top end speed all right well then what i would say is well, let's look for a propeller that has a higher pitch okay that takes a bigger bite out of the air per rotation all right and you say that's great so what we want to do is we as a general rule of thumb anytime that you increase the pitch by an inch you want to decrease the diameter by an inch and vice versa so you say okay well here's a propeller and it's not quite exactly an inch difference but it's a it's a 50 uh, it's a 50-45, so it's a 5-inch diameter and a 4.5-inch pitch, okay? So, we, so we're, we're increasing the pitch here, all right? And why is that? Why do we want to do that? Why do we want to decrease the diameter? Why not just keep the diameter? Because then we'd have, you know, even, even more powerful, powerful of a propeller, right? Well, the thing is, is that motors, uh, motor manufacturers, they make their motors for a specific uh, size range and pitch range of the motors. And if you if you don't know what uh, your specific motor calls for, go look it up um, on the manufacturer's website or uh, if or you know instructions on the box or something like that. You can find all kinds of useful information about what size propellers are recommended and usually uh, some charts that, that actually give you specific uh, information about the amperage draw and the 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 RPM of that specific propeller with that specific motor. Anyway, so the point is is that if you use a propeller that is either too long or has too much pitch, you uh, could burn the motor out. It would cause the motor to heat up uh, because it's trying to put so much energy into turning the propeller that it was not designed to turn. Um, so that's why you want to decrease the, 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 the diameter when you increase the pitch and, um, and increase the di and you can increase the diameter if you decrease the pitch. So that way your motor is not working too hard and you know fries itself. Okay, so you say that's great. And you know you could go you know vice versa here. So, um, going really fast, but you know I just want to do some more I want to do some more cruising around or you know I want to get better flight times. What can I do? Well, you can go to a, a longer propeller. A, a larger diameter propeller, but then decrease the pitch a little bit, and that way your motor won't have to work as hard for every every revolution of the propeller. So that's going to increase your flight times and your efficiency, um, but it it may decrease your speed a little bit. You know, we're just talking in general terms here. Your situation um, may turn out a little bit differently. Now you say, okay, that's great, that's great. I have a, I have I have two options here, you know, I've, and th th there are many more options, but just, you know, these two options, that's great. But, you know, I want some, I want much better control. I want, um, I want more acceleration in my, in my airplane, and I want more control in my quadcopter around turns and stuff. That's when we get into multi-bladed propellers. Uh-huh. So in this case, this is a 50-40, okay. So we have a little bit less pitch than this guy, but now we have three blades. Whoa! Now what this is really going to help with is acceleration because if you think about it, if you think about every time the blade rotates, um, it's it's pushing air. It's pushing air away from it. So 
for one full revolution, it's going to essentially, I guess you could say, push the air three times, as opposed to these, they're just going to push the air twice per rotation. So, um, so that's, yeah, so that's, so th this is going to give you better acceleration, which means it's going to help you go from zero to whatever much faster, but it may not, you may, you may not still be going as fast as something that has a higher pitch to it, okay? And this is good for, especially for quadcopters, because this means that it's going to be much more responsive to the throttle, because it's going to accelerate the air faster, and you're going to get a much more responsive, grippy quad. Think of multi-bladed propellers as like the tread on a tire, okay? If you have, uh, you know, your like big old uh, monster truck tires, that means that you're going to have a bunch of, you know, a bunch more blades here. The more blades that you have, to an extent, the more traction you're going to have on the air, just like if you have really knobby tires on a truck. But if you have, um, uh, you know, conversely, if you have like a, uh, you know, some, some sort of, you know, uh, street car, right? You don't want a, bun a bunch of knobby tires because that's just going to kill, it's going to kill your, uh, your efficiency and your gas mileage. And um, so you want something that's very smooth, that doesn't disturb the air as much, and that doesn't have as much of a grip on the air because we're not concerned about having a grip on the air. We're concerned about gas mileage. And that's, that's kind of the same, same kind of idea with these propellers. Hey, I hope you learned something in this video. Thanks for watching. If I forgot something, please let me know in the comments below because I, I want to make sure that uh, that you guys get a good handle on, on this propeller stuff. Um, again, if you want to see more of this, consider subscribing to this channel. Hit that like button. Give it a likey-like, okay? And let me know what are your favorite kind of propellers. What kind of propellers would you recommend for a beginner? Let me know in the comments, and I will see you next time.